<laughs> With the Greater Jakarta, it's now it's about 35 million. So the the size of our population translate that into into actions. Uh, but perhaps I'll uh, and if I may, uh, I'll use the opportunity to issues you discussed today, and you may know that Monash more broadly is an expert. Uh, university and urban mobility. Andrew has been very kind to my faculty. I mean, we should make him an honorary dean. <laughs> <laughs> but just to uh, not miss the opportunity, we are a faculty of Monash that is um, really committed to this whole challenge. So many existing programs. So we want to make sure it is happening. So the way it works is we translate it um, your city is 11 million people, but as I understand it, it doubles to the Australian population size during the, during the day. So you've got an even bigger job than you talked about. So let me, if I, if I may ask you an economics question, since I first met you as an economics student at Gajamara. <laughs> so in your prospective career looking forward, so the Indonesian economy has done quite well during the democratic era, the last 25 years. And I'd argue, and a lot of people argue also, that one of the reasons is that the key economics positions have been sort of insulated to or outside the political process. That is, uh, the two key posts, Medri Kuwangan and Bank Indonesia Governor, have typically been technocratic people, exemplified currently by Igor Srimoyani and Pat Perry Wajo. So that seems to be a crucial part of the Indonesian political economy construct in the democratic era. Looking forward, would that be your uh, intention to keep that kind of Tradition going. <laughs> <laughs>